Swinburne University of Technology. So, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Barry Armani. I'm Head of Marketing, Tourism and Social Impact. And today is the first of our department series of what we're terming applied research presentations. And uh, we use that term specifically because the projects that you're going to get a presentation on today are all uh, applied research and uh, all have also led to publication. So uh, I think in some ways this is uh, our department's contribution to the faculty strategy of having engaged and applied research. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the three speakers, all one after the other. Speaker number one, Dr. Martin Fluker, will take the podium and do his presentation for about 20 minutes, followed by Dr. Ryan Job, followed by Chris Felsted. So we'll have presentations one after the other in the data list style, but they will be a little bit longer so we can get more content. And then afterwards, uh, Dr. Tony Nankervis will uh, steer questions and give us a bit of a summary on uh, what's been presented to us today. So without further ado, I would like to first introduce Dr. Dr. Martin Fluker from Victoria University, where Martin's been lecturing for 16 years. I know Mar Martin very well, and I do remember one morning when he said to me, come into my office for a moment, Barry, have a look at this. And that was the beginnings of what is now termed a citizen science system that Martin introduced, which, has, uh, which was uh, pretty sexy groovy at the time, but has grown substantially to be almost national now. He's using the system. I'm not going to foreshadow what it is. He'll tell you that himself. Uh, but uh, it is in places that you wouldn't believe now and, and very, very well recognized. Dr. Ryan Jopp, I also know for a long time. He was an honor student here at Swinburne with Tony Nankervis some years ago. Ryan went on to do his PhD, and I came across Ryan in the Center for Hospitality and Tourism Research at Victoria University where he was working on climate change adaptation. And he's going to tell us something about his research there on the Great Ocean Road. Our third speaker is Chris Felstead from our uh, IS department, which is a, a new department in our faculty. And Chris and students from uh, IS have been doing social impact IT projects for some years in India, uh, with a tourism focus on some of those as well. And Chris, though uh, he is an IT expert, has had uh, involvement in domestic tour wholesaling. He's had a <coughs> career as well as a chief information officer in a number of companies, uh, some of which have been travel related as well. So without further ado, let me welcome Dr. Martin Fluker. Thank you, Barry. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk about this project, which um, I find very easy to talk about because we've been so involved in it for the last five and a half years. For the first four, half, four years, pretty much on a solo basis, it's just me doing everything. But in the last 18 months and the last six months especially, a lot more collaboration. And it's resulted in the project about to blossom in a big way. And I'll, I'll tell you more about that soon. So the Fluke Post project, community-based environmental monitoring. I'm going to tell you what the project does. I'm going to tell you how, we, how, it, how it works, and then I'm going to talk a little, little bit about citizen science and how this project fits within citizen science. Okay, so what it does. The project's beauty is in its simplicity. It uses, or engages tourists, uh, locals at destinations, other community members, to help record visual records of particular environments that were chosen to monitor over long periods of time. As I say, the project's been going for five years now, about five and a half. We envisage it to go for another decade at least. So, what we do is choose a site, install a Fluke Post and start collecting images. Now this is what the Fluke Post looks like. It's a physical wooden post. This one's down in the Twelve Apostles National Park on Great Ocean Road. And uh, this is just a girl, she's passing by, it's a kind of photo, and she's showing how it works. People, the structure's coming up soon, I'll explain that. But if I can get to choosing the location, this is Yanis Dimitriou from the Karangamai Catchment Management Authority. And dealing with land management agencies is key to the whole project. I've, I've developed a tool, I'm not the land manager. 
Craig and my catchment management authority, they've commissioned me to put in a series of posts for them. There were seven in fact. One of them was at Lawn. And so we go down and I say to, to Gianni, look, when you choose a location, think about what you would have liked to have seen 10 years ago and everything in between. So we chose this, this, this uh, spot here. We're looking at this, uh, this bankman, which has been going to be revegetated at some stage. So once we selected the location, we then build the posts. I live in an apartment block in Yarraville. This is my underground car park, and this is my workshop for making fluker posts. Um, I, I'll freely admit that I've put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into this project over the last five years largely outside of normal working hours in building the posts. Um, we make them out of cedar, gold, hardwood timber. They come in a plastic sleeve from Bunnings. You buy them, you cut the sleeve off, and the oil start coming out of that, that timber immediately. We hit it with a two-part epoxy resin, two coats of primer, four coats of Wither Shield Protect, four coats of green on the top, and then we make the camera crate up here, which will explain soon. The more work we can put into preparing the post here at the workshop, the longer it will last out in the field, because some of them are in very harsh environments. Once it's built, we go up and dig the hole. Uh, this is a Western treatment plant, and we've, we've, had, we've put in 30 fluke posts there. So we used to put the post hole digger there, we cement the posts in, make sure they're nice and square, and this is the sign that's on each fluke post. And it changes a little bit. Basically, this is it. So this sign here is what you'll see on the physical post. We leave no camera on the post. People walk along, they see the, the sign, they read the instructions. Please place your, own, place your own digital camera in the cradle on top of this fluke post. Take a photo of the view, preferably date stamps, but they don't, that's okay. Email a photo to gmail.com. Now we use a series of different email addresses depending on the location, the project that we're working on. This project we're working in collaboration with Deakin University and more than all these primary school. I'll tell you more about this project soon. So that's the idea. For people walking along the Great Ocean Walk, for example, in the Great Otway National Park, we've got 20 fluke posts there. Looking at different vistas, some looking at an open river mouth, some looking at a walking track that's prone to uh, change in terms of above. Uh, erosion, weed infestation, disease, I'll show you some of this coming up soon. There are a number of things that the land managers want to look at. We have 79 fluke posts in the ground around the country. As Barry said, most of them are in Victoria. We have three in the Great Barrier Reef, and I, last week I was in, um, in South Australia, the University of South Australia, we would be putting 10 fluke posts in, in around Adelaide in the near future. So, each of these albums, online web albums, represent a fluke post. A person takes a photo, emails it into me, I receive that photo, I process it, and then I arrange it in chronological order in one of these publicly accessible web albums. So that we have collections that have been going back in some cases for five years now, where community-based people have taken photos <coughs> from a range of different cameras, iPhones, Samsungs, digital SLRs, whatever it is, we'll accept it, they email it in, and they can be large files, small files, different focal lengths, doesn't matter. We accept that photo and arrange in chronological mm -hmm. order in one of these albums. We've got a website, www.flickpost.com. Um, this is the Great Ocean Walk. Um, Post about 15, I think it is, because the range is coming. Put it in. And uh, this website gives links to a number of things, a lot of the media releases we have. I'll show you something soon and a link to all the collections in the albums and also gives information on it being a Victoria University project, uh, costs involved if people want to look a post and uh, information on how we build the project and what it's all about. We have a, uh, a, a Facebook page, 
too, you know, and, uh, and it's in fact very important for us. Uh, we've got 310 likes so far. People say, you know, <laughs> they said a fluker poster. Oh, what's a fluker? Come on. Okay, so I've done this banner. This is a fluker. This is a fluker post. This is a fluker post mobile. And you've seen the fluker post trailer. And uh, look, having my vehicle with this on the side has been good because there have been a number of times where I've been in a national park and a car park. People walk up, oh, you're the fluker post guy. And yeah, we talk about it. Or I'm explaining it to new research partners and their management agencies. And yeah, there's photos on the, on the sign here. I can say, well, this is what it does. And there's some changes happening with this post here. So that's been really good. All right, I want to now explain one thing. Um, this paper here, Developing Monitoring Plans for Structure Placement in the Aquatic Environment. It's all about monitoring and, and how to uh, set up systems. And within this, um, they come up with these reasons why these environmental monitoring projects often don't work. Lack of funding, complexity of monitoring, lack of incentives, lack of long-term approach, frequent change in personnel. Now, without even trying, having read this paper, I feel that we've addressed many of these very well. But most importantly, um, how can you make sure it works? Identify key personnel who will champion and support the funding and monitoring project. By naming it the Fluker Post Project, it's less to do with my ego, but more to do with me being the champion of the project. I've been going for five and a half years, and I want to be an academic for at least over 10 years. So it's been, I'll say Barry before, it's been a, sometimes a double-edged sword. You know, I feel a little embarrassed about it sometimes, but largely I'm very proud of it, and uh, it's just a fluke post project. An unusual name, but it's been put to a good use here, I hope. All right, I'm going to show you some collections now. I'll show you four collections so you get an idea of the sort of data we get back information. This one's at the Brisbane Ranges National Park. It's looking at the Anarchy Gorge. And this is a walkway that goes through and that goes, this is back in 2010. And uh, this site goes from being lush, nice little walkway, across the walk. And on this, on this walkway, you notice here there's a galvanised iron bridge that's been put in there to, uh, as, so you can step over when the water goes through. Drought, you know, dry as sin. Two, flood. Now I'm only showing you selected images from this whole collection so we get an idea. From there to, you know, into state of, oh, you know, starting to recover. We get photos in then like this sometimes, you know, finger over the lens. Um, sometimes there's people in it. We haven't had any, any inappropriate shots yet, but we, <laughs> but we live in hope. And, uh, but uh, now, this guy here is actually a principal of a primary school, Clifton Springs Primary School, which will become relevant later on in the presentation. So it's gone from that to this. So the steel bridge has been washed out. Okay. Parks Victoria are charged with making this track accessible to people in a safe and responsible manner. So Julia here, they've mm -hmm. had to close this section of the track down and uh, spend $200,000 on getting it back up to scratch, including the cost of that sign, I guess. And uh, what they're doing now is putting in these stepping stones instead of that galvanised steel bridge. There's the fluke post there. So now, I'm quite happy to take photos around the, the site to get a bit of an idea of what's going on. And uh, to give even a richer idea and understanding of what this environment is looking like, I've um, <coughs> gone in with a remote control quadcopter drone with, with GoPro camera underneath, <coughs> flown it up to 100 metres or so, and taken this shot here. So here are the stepping stones, the fluke of post is here. And so park management, the rangers, Parks Victoria, DEPI, they can now say, well, good. Let's see if this bridge lasts for the next 10 years. They galvanised on when they were put in there, it didn't. Let's try something new and see if this lasts. Now they have evidence of it. The next one I'm going to show you is one of our, I think, most significant. It's on the Great Ocean Walk. What's going since 2010, and uh, 
what we're looking at here is uh, this grass tree, quite healthy. It's good, but all around you can see evidence of dieback. There's a disease that's in many national parks in Victoria called Phytophthora, more commonly known as cinnamon fungus, and it can be spread through the inadvertent behaviour of people walking through the park, getting on their spores on their boots, and spread into healthy parts of the park. If that happens, there is no cure, no cure for this disease at all. So if they get it in the park in the area, they've got to close that section of track off and make a diversion. This grass tree is known as an indicator species. If it gets infected by Phytophthora, it will start dying very quick, quickly. Parks have done soil testing, there's no Phytophthora, but they suspect it. So we've now got an early warning system for this part of the park, and people send photos in. And when they do, I always look at that grass tree to see if it's, what it's like. Now, on the edges of the track, there's a hundred kilometres of walking track on the Great Ocean Walk. Every now and then, parts of needs to send a crew of contractors in there with whippersnippers to clear away the scrappy grass there so people can find their way. These photos can also let the rangers know when to send those crews in. Oh, we haven't had much rain. What's it like on this section of the track? Yeah, you'd be lucky the park ranger gets there once a year for this section. Now they look and look at the photos and say, oh no, it's fine, we don't need to send the, the whippers to the crew in just yet. But sometimes they do, and they whip a snip of the grass tree. <laughs> <laughs> and which is a bit unfortunate, but plants like this, when they're distressed like that, do one or two things, they're going to die or shoot up a flowering stem. And that's what's done. Here is here. So, hallelujah, it's healthy, it's still going, no phytophthora, and we still have our early warning system. That's from the last one that's been sent in 2013. This one, and it's um, a little bit different. This is the Melton Botanic Gardens. That's what we're looking at. Pretty? Could be. <laughs> well, let's find out. There's a very active friends of group in this national park. And um, we put this post there, the fluke post, so we can see the way that this is changing. And I have a record of it. We're very proud, justifiably so. And that's getting better and better and better all the time. The next one I'm going to show you, this is the last example. This is in a Point Wallen style. It's a new subdivision called The Point. This wetland here backs onto a Ramsar listed wetland, so very quite significant. And uh, what we're looking at here is this section of land. Um, you can see there are no houses here yet and when this photo was taken, but then bam, that's what it's going to be like. So it's been redeveloped, and we want to see how this area here in particular is revegetating. So over time, you know, it's getting better and better. Once again, another GoPro, quadcopter, drone, photo to put into the collection to give some further information. And I think this is one of the last photos we have from it. Okay, so more research. You know, this, I came across this paper here, using repeat landscape photography to assess vegetation changes. And what they did here was look at photos taken 100 years ago and then photos taken today. And looking for those changes. Hmm. Another one. Okay, you can see you know, that, that, that hill there, this hill here, changed quite markedly. So, if I can take you back to Lawn for the uh, Fluke Post CC MA07, it's been in since May 2012. That's the Fluke Post. Now, if I can just explain on the Fluke Post, this angle here is critical. It's different for every Fluke Post. It's a two filter process to get a flick post happen. One, to choose the location and for me to measure that angle. What angle do you need to the flick post cut it at the top to make the camera cradle, where we put any camera on there, it's good to look at the same perspective and what you want to check out. So it could be 9 degrees, 12 degrees, 5 degrees, the change of which post. So, from this one here, we're looking, as I said at the beginning, we're looking at this section here. I like this because you can see the surf, I can see what the surf is like. But what I've done is gone to Museum Victoria 
and found old photographs from around that area. And this is taken in 1930. So let's put them into the collection, reference them, and then back to what we have now. You know, this walking track here, I reckon this weekend, it's going to be cold down the coast, but you'll probably get you know, 500 people walk up there before lunchtime. So we get a reasonable number of photos from this post. And change it All right, I want to talk a little bit now about uh, three the minutes three minutes. Okay. Uh, citizen science, this project really must come home on these three areas, research, education, and engagement. We just about to start the Fluker Post Schools project. These are students from Clifton Hill, Clifton Springs Primary School. And what I've done with them is gone out and presented to the class year uh, grade five, six students, gone out to the field, chosen, chosen two locations for two Fluker Posts. They then base their environmental science projects for the rest of the year on those collections. We get an environmental scientist on board who will champion that school and provide their input. Students were encouraged to write their own stories, drawings, interpretations of these environments and add them to the collections. Kinematics Trust, we put in for a $95,000 project with them to build a website for Flick Post Schools project. We will have Clifton Springs, Warnerville East Primary School, Derriman Primary School, those three will already signed up to have them on this website and so that the students can talk to each other. Oh yeah, we're at Warnerville, we're looking at Beach of Sharks Head washed up. Oh, we're at Derriman, we've got grasslands, the homes of endangered medicals lizard. Oh, we're at Clifton Springs. Freshwater Creek, neighbours are throwing their green waste in there. Once we get this happening, and we've got it on, we'll have to find out about this end of the month, and 30,000 projects with Lord Mayors will find out that, about that very soon, we can tab out this website to any number of primary schools. Oh, really, because we're up in the Murray and we're looking at the Gundau State Forest. Oh, really, because we're up in Cairns and we're looking at this reef. Oh, really, because we're in. Fiji and we're looking at coconut trees, or really because we're in Vietnam and we're looking at these. That's the vision for the Flicker Post Schools project. There's some theory behind it and how we want to put, uh, get together the students, land management agencies and scientists. There are a couple of papers forthcoming um, based on the Flicker Post project. Just on engagement, um, in 2012 I've, I've received the Vice Chancellor's Peak Award for Outstanding Engagement at Victoria University based on the Flicker Post project. There's a story in every one of these logos. Whether it be <coughs> universities at up the top there, whether it be these private organisations here, Stockholm, Reef Magic, Cardno, whether it be the Catholic Management Authorities, whether it's these primary schools who are involved in Flicker Post school projects, I've been working with every one of these organisations. Whenever we put a post in, people want to know about it. This is our Balnaring Beach two weeks ago. Putting it on the beach, people come out. They want to know what's happening, they want to be involved. Wherever I go and talk about the Fluka Post project, it's always the same. People are interested. What a great idea. It's going really good. I don't know if you guys are thinking this, but it'd be nice. And. Uh, so the community engagement that we have happening with this has just been outstanding. On the Facebook page, we put posts like this. Where are we going to show it in, you know? November 2010, April 2014, we can see those changes in the Great Ocean Walk and people comment on these lots. We've had a lot of media coverage on the project. Uh, been on radio, been on TV for Skype. Um, I'm a success story at Vic Uni, apparently, which is nice. And uh, Ecos magazine's a Syro publication, so the story's definitely been getting out there. Uh, Barry was talking about 3D printers before in his office, and uh, I said, well, we've got something here. We're always trying to innovate with the project. There's a 3D printed camera cradles to go on the top of the post. And that's what they look like in my workshop right now. Glued on the top, nailed on the top, and painted with a little black camera on the top there, showing the direction to make them hopefully be a proof. 
this is one of the best things about the project. It gets me out in the field. This is up in Cairns, Great Barrier Reef, where we have three food pipes. Thank you, Tom. This has been a Swinburne production.